Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to show you how to configure a username and password in Cisco Router. This is a uh, scenario that we are going to use. It's just a simple one, just having a two routers and how to configure username and password. That's it. And this is our task that we have to do for the configuration. First, we need to configure IP address for the topology. Then, uh, create a username and password as below. This is our username and password that we need to create it. Okay, I have already configured our IP address as per the topology. You can just check it. Okay. Um, IP address has been configured. I just check the reachability from this end to that end. Okay, reachability is there. No issue in terms of reachability. Next step is to configure our uh, username and password in R1. Okay. This is R1. I'm going to configure username and password. Username is Cisco. And I'm going to give a privilege of cooking so that I can directly have a right access. Password is PGR spot. Okay. Next is apply to the VK configuration. line vty 0 uh, it has a as many more than 1200 1600 um, nine, line numbers or that that means uh, more than 1000 inches can be used at a time i'm going to give just a 4 that is 0 to 4 in the sense up to maximum 5 users can be used over here so by using a remote session okay next is uh, login local so login local means it will check its local username and password that has been configured in the router. That's what is the login local. Okay. Next is um, I have enabled everything over here. So I just want to check whether I can able to reach a concern router that is 1.1. It's asking for username and password is PGR spot. Okay, I can able to reach the router one. Okay, so how does this packet will be uh, username and password is being shown in terms of Wireshark whether it is encrypted or not? Just look at it. Um, so I'm going to start the capture. Start Wireshark. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is. Just initiating a ping and check a ping that's been flying. Next, I'm going to tell net to the content router with Cisco and okay. Now you can check there's a cell net, it's been a uh, packet has been transmitted in terms of cell net. Okay, I'm going to TCP stream and get it. This is my password. It has been in a plain text. You can also check it once again. Just check it here. It's whatever we have typed in the router, it will be directly seen at that end. Like TCP stream can check here is the password is a PGR spot. We can get this information. Uh, the telnet is transmitting packets in an unencrypted format. So that if anyone gets this packet, they can easily know what is our password and what are the possibilities. Everything they can get the information. This is one downside of uh, telnet. The passwords and username will be gone in an unencrypted format. Next, in order to overcome that, the SSH has been introduced. Uh, now we will compare about SSH and how does it works. Okay. Um, for SSH, we will generate some sort of keys for encryption. In order to generate a keys, we want to give some domain name and we need to generate a key. So for that, first I am going to uh, give a command for generating a keys.
to generate RSA. If you give this, it asks you to give that domain name first. So that we need a domain name in order to enable a key generation process. So I am giving a domain name. IP domain name as pgrsports.com. Okay. Next, now I am going to generate a key. I'm going to give uh, by 2024. That's it. It is done. Next, I am going to configure this thing. Same thing in the line VTY mode. So this line VTY zero, and then uh, by default only transport will be enabled. SSH will be disabled in routers. So in order to enable it, you just want to give transport input. There are many commands over here as telnet, SSH, or login. If you need to enable all the things, you can directly give all, or if you need to enable only SSH or telnet, you can give the so and so commands if you need. I'm going to enable um, telnet and SSH. Telnet, SSH. That's it. Can check the running configuration. It's transport input telnet and SSH and login is local. You check this local username and password. Okay, the same thing now we will check with SSH. SSH. Uh, we will not directly telnet using SSH. We uh, if you give a direct um, host name or concerned IP in order to reach it, it will not be acceptable. So that we just give our username over here. It's hyphen L, the local username. What is the username that we are going to use? It's Cisco over here. And then we just want to give a IP address, which I prefer 192.168.1.1. That's it. It will ask for a password to the concerned username. The Cisco is a username, and the password is we just want to give it now. Okay. That's it. Uh, we can just check it now. Here is the SSH. The packet is being transmitted in forms of SSH. Just check it. This is how it will be seen. So uh, we don't have any terms of you know username and passwords in a clear text. It will be in some sort of unencrypted format. Sorry, in terms of encrypted format. Uh, it will use some algorithm as Diffie Hellman or uh, encryption algorithms as AES. Any key generation process it will turn at a backend so that you will not get anything in a clear text. It will be very difficult for the concerned uh, hackers to get the information. This is why we are using a SSH. But if you check into telnet part, this is the telnet part, so it will be in a clear text. So that's the difference between SSH and telnet, and this is how it works. That's it about how to configure a username and password in Cisco routers and this is the difference between a telnet and SSH. How does they work? That's it. Thanks for watching. Until next time.